Hey, welcome back again to Life Skills. Uh, you know, I've said this before, but this is a big deal for us to be able to communicate with you and to share information that might be helpful. Um, this is not too long after the fires that have devastated Southern Oregon and especially, you know, the, the, the cities of Talent and Phoenix and part of Southern uh, Medford and parts of Ashland. And one of the things that we said in the past, we haven't said for a while, and I guess it's timely and maybe a, a week late for some people. Um, a lot of our folks are renting and they're, you're in even one of our apartments possibly. We really encourage you to get renter's insurance. Don't think it's too expensive. Don't think that it's something you shouldn't get. Um, we had a person that got burned out of one of our apartments a couple of years ago and it broke our hearts that we had this family that had been homeless, got into one of our apartments. Now they created a, a fire in their apartment. They lost the ability to be in that apartment. It destroyed it and it destroyed everything they had. And our insurance doesn't cover that. Um, as a, a landlord or as an owner of an apartment, our insurance doesn't cover the people that get pushed out. And what we're finding with these fires, a lot of these people were renting mobile homes, they were renting apartments, they didn't have renter's insurance. And so they lost everything. The, the insurance that covers the facility doesn't cover your stuff. So if you haven't got renter's insurance, do it now. And make sure you look into that. And it's not that expensive. It's usually somewhere around maybe 10 to 15, maybe $20 a month. And I know that might seem like a lot, but it's a whole lot different than if you lose everything. So check into that. Uh, we're going to talk about self-care today. And that's even part of self-care is by having that insurance to take in just in case is taking care of yourself. You know, we've often said, um, do the things you need to do so that you're safe. Um, and that includes your mental health. That includes your physical health. Um, and your emotional health. This is a time whenever the world is in a mess, don't you be a mess. And if you do the things that you need to do, you won't be. And I'm sure we're going to talk about, I, we talked about diet a couple of weeks ago. That's a big deal, eating the right kind of foods. But getting enough sleep, um, getting the right kind of sleep. Um, uh, I'm, a, I'm a believer in the Lord. And when I, I have to spend time every day with God, that is my self-care. I have to spend that time in the morning where I pull out the word and I read it and I pray and I, and I walk. And if I don't do that, I'm a mess. But if I do that, I can handle just about anything that comes, you know. And so whatever kind of pattern you need to get into, you know, some people do it through exercise. Some people do it through support groups. Don't neglect those during this time. You know, yes, there's a lot of crazy things going on and COVID and, you know, got to wear masks. But you can do all these things safely um, and just don't neglect that stuff. Then when the stresses come along, you'll be able to handle them um, in ways that you never thought you could. But when, when I notice when I don't do the self-care, when the stresses come along, I can't handle the stress. So I encourage you, whatever that self-care looks like for you, take advantage of it. You have your caseworkers, call them. Our offices are open, call us. We'll connect you with somebody. Um, we're here to make sure you succeed. And um, yeah, let's just make sure we work with each other. Thanks so much for being part of this organization. Hi, everybody. So a couple weeks ago, we filmed a segment on self-care with four of our uh, staff members who just completed the peer support specialist training. So what you're about to see is uh, our four staff members talking to you about self-care. Well, hi there, Iran. Iran, sorry, I got to say that again because I don't want to get it wrong. No problem. Hi, Susan. How's it going today? It's going good. How are you, Iran? I'm doing very well. I've been practicing a lot on self care today and uh, I'm ready to do this. Nice. So tell us your ideas on self care. Well, my ideas on self care, um, I definitely would have to cover the seven dimensions of wellness in order to explain uh, what my ideas are. And um, those uh, seven dimensions are physical, environmental wellness, spiritual wellness, emotional wellness, intellectual, intellectual, intellectual wellness. Sorry about that. It's okay. Occupational wellness and social wellness. And uh, for each one, you know, I, I have, I have, uh, some goals that I that I'm trying to achieve in each area and right now uh, like for physical you know I'm, I'm doing exercise because it, it, it helps me it helps me a lot uh, it releases endorphins in my mind and in it and it helps to stimulate me as I, as I go through the day and, and keep me focused um, eating properly as well you know if I don't eat properly I start to get I start to shake a little bit and I, and 
and it causes a little bit of confusion. You know, um, environment, environmental wellness, you know, I, I'm doing the best that I can to try to create um, a stress-free environment for me, uh, especially when, um, you know, I want to meditate or, or pray or if I start feeling any type of anxiety or stress, you know, I'll do, I'll do whatever it takes to, to remove myself from stress and uh, anxiety-fueled environments. Um, the third would be spiritual wellness, you know, being, being led by my values and morals. That's, that's huge. You know, what is my motives in, in everything that I'm doing? You know, I really need to check my motives, you know, is what I'm doing selfish or selfless, you know, uh, is it going to harm or, or other people or myself or not, you know? So, um, that's how I practice spiritual wellness and of course, prayer and meditation, um, emotional wellness, um, get, making sure I get sound sleep. You know, I work graveyards right now, so I have to really just take care of myself and, and make sure that I'm getting that sound sleep right now during the day, you know, um, making decisions without worrying about it, worrying about what other people may think, you know, and if I'm checking my motives on my, on my decisions, then I really have nothing to worry about. Um, the intellectual wellness, uh, being smart about, you know, things like how I pay my bills, you know, um, educating myself, reading, studying, you know, learning on, on a daily basis, keeping an open mind is something that's really, really important. Because the minute I think that I know something or I know what's best, um, I'm basically closing the door to, to, to learn anything. Um, occupational wellness, you know, um, I look at it like this. If I'm waking up and going and doing what I love, I'm really not going to work. You know, I'm getting paid for, for doing something that I enjoy. And that just relieves all the stress, you know. And then, of course, um, you know, being consistent with my values and goals toward what I'm doing, you know, the, the, the job that I have, you know. Is it consistent with my values and goals? And then uh, social wellness, you know, having a plan to spend quality time with my family, friends, and my support system. Actually making a plan, you know, okay, on this day, let's meet, let's talk, you know, one-on-one, -on -one, you and I, you know, let's, let's have that personal relationship, that personal time, and keep into that, you know. And um, so basically, that's, that's what I do, you know, to um, – to practice self-care. And I can't do that, you know, without setting goals. I have to have goals in each area, you know, and, and for instance, so my overall wellness plan is to love myself in such a way um, that I, that I no longer cause harm to myself or other people. That's like my long-term recovery goal. And, um, you know, just a couple examples of how I will achieve that is I got to have some short term objectives mm -hmm. to meet that, you know. Uh, so, like I said, for physical, you know, I exercise and I eat properly, you know. Um, and it, it is that, you know, and, and I got to make sure my objectives are attainable, measurable, and realistic, you know. So, is that uh, attainable? Well, absolutely, you know. I, I eat three times a day. I sit down at a certain time and, 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 and that's what I do uh, for exercise every other day, you know, and, and I have to, and I have to keep to that, you know, I have to have integrity in my goals and basically show up for my life, you know? Yeah. And, and for another one, you know, another example would be like spiritual wellness, you know? Um, so my short term objective in that is to create, you know, safe and healthy boundaries for myself that complement my morals and values, you know, uh, and I begin immediately and work until living with my boundaries becomes a normal part of my life. You know, is that attainable? Absolutely. Measurable? Yes. You know, um, is it realistic? Sure it is. It, it's something that, that I could do right now and I am doing, you know, um, you know, think things through before making decisions. That's also part of my spiritual wellness. 
and the, you know, uh, check my motives one decision at a time. So there again, it's measurable, attainable, and uh, specific, you know? And, and so basically that's, that's what I do. And, and, and I have goals in, in all seven areas and I'm not trying to make 10 goals, you know, per area. It's just one or two that are very attainable that, you know, that I can accomplish. And then once I get those accomplished, then I'll move on to the next ones. And that's basically what I believe self-care is showing up for my life and caring about myself. That's awesome. Thank you for that. Well, we have Lindsay Hartwell with us. She just popped okay. into the meeting. Um, and before we go on, I, I want to talk a little bit about the, the training. So it looks like you guys have learned a lot from the, the peer support training that you just went through. And I'm hearing uh, lots of the concepts coming out of what Iran is saying. Um, so what about you, Lindsay? What kinds of uh, ideas do you have about self-care? What did you learn in the training about self-care? Um, you know, I really didn't have a good concept of what real self-care was. And so I had these ideas of, oh, well, I have to, you know, block out this certain amount of time to do these certain things. And I didn't realize that it's, it's really, it's quite simple. You know, um, just having, doing something that makes me relax, that helps me relax, um, centering myself, um, just sometimes just breathing um, for me is self-care because I get so wound up and I have all these things to do and I've got my kids and I've got work and, and I'm just like, I don't even know what's going on, you know, so just to stop and, and enjoy that moment for me is self-care. Um, and before I didn't really, I didn't really understand that. Um, I did get a lot from the life skills of, of healthy eating and nutrition. Man, I had forgotten how that really affects me, you know, just having a good diet and a wholesome diet and, um, you know, getting into the hustle bustle of every day. It's so easy to just throw something frozen in the oven and okay, this is dinner, you know, um, but, but eating your, your vegetables and your fruits and, you know, um, doing the, the things that you need to do to stay healthy helps me mentally. Yeah. Any thoughts before um, we open up to some other questions? No, I'm just grateful that I've, I've been reminded um, how important it is to, to do self-care um, and, you know, I need that. I need it because I can't exhaust everything that I have to give and be giving more than what I've gotten coming in. So I have to remember that. Yeah. So how has uh, the whole pandemic situation affected your self-care? Um, I know some people have really done a lot better because they have a little more time if they're working from home. Other people have really struggled with it because they're working longer hours. You know, so how, uh, Lindsay, how has that affected you? Um, you know, it, it's funny that you ask because, you know, since the pandemic, my life really hadn't changed. You know, the only thing that changed is the struggle of trying to find childcare because all the schools are shut down. Um, but the everyday life didn't change. I didn't stop coming to work. I didn't, you know, I didn't stay home when, when everything happened. Um, and so really nothing changed for me. Um, I, it did affect me, um, with my mental wellness, um, um, because it was very stressful because I was constantly thinking about what if one of my kids gets sick, what if I get sick, um, you know, it was, it was rough and it has been rough because those are still fears that I live with, you know, um, but as far as like self care, um, it really didn't change. I mean, I've, I have had my spouts of, you know, anxiety and depression. Um, it did affect me uh, for about a month or so where I was just like completely wiped out because I just didn't know what to think or what to do. And, you know, um, self-care was something for me. It was hard for me to achieve. How about you, Iran? How has the COVID-19 pandemic affected you and how you do self-care? Uh, great question. Um, for me, it 
it was a challenge, but also a blessing. Um, cause I, I was actually, uh, in prison when this pandemic began. And, um, and so when I came out, um, I didn't see nothing abnormal out here because everything was running just as it was. Uh, however, there was some challenges because, you know, things like I was trying to get an ID so I could go to work and, and uh, because of the pandemic, the, the DMV was closed for uh, quite some time and, and I wasn't able to do any of that for months. Uh, but the blessing was, is I got to spend some healthy time at home with my family and uh, really work on um, my self-care, you know, taking care of myself, learning how to uh, adapt and adjust you know, outside of prison and, um, you know, uh, really began exercising and eating right and, and you know, uh, practicing, uh, um, you know, having a relationship uh, with my family and, and stuff like that. So, so really, it wasn't, um, it wasn't really a big deal to me, to be honest with you. Okay. Uh, so we have Jesse with us as well. She just came into the meeting. Hi, Jesse. Hi. How are you doing? Pretty good. Good. So we're talking about self-care. So what kind of thoughts do you have on self-care? What does that mean to you? Um, it's really important. Uh, it helps you restart uh, fresh for the next day so you don't bring in um, the same negativity from last the like the day before to a fresh new day nice so what kind of things do you do for self-care what what kind of revitalizes and re-energizes you definitely my family um water i'm kind of a mermaid so i love water going swimming the ocean, those are like ultimate things that refresh me, but reading and music and drawing are definitely other things that I love to do. Great. So um, while you're all here, um, would you take a minute and talk about the recent peer support specialist training that you completed here at Rover Tree? Uh, you want to start, Iran? Sure, I will. Um, I loved it. I, I gained a lot of uh, insight about myself and also how to uh, see other people and, and how to be empathetic. Uh, the thing that I, that, that I uh, picked up, uh, the most important thing I picked up was on the spectrum of attitudes. Um, I, could, I could view people as objects, uh, which means that I know what's best for their life. I can I can view people as uh, recipients. I don't think I said that right, but um, uh, and and that's basically me saying I still know what's best, but I'm going to go ahead and let you participate in this conversation anyways. Or I can view people as resources, and uh, when I view others as a resource, that means that you know I'm on the same level, you know, playing level with them. And basically, who am I to think that I know what's best for them in their lives and help them to become the resource for their own selves and to set their own goals and just come alongside them when yeah. I do that. You know, that's, that's what I, 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 I learned uh, more than anything else. And uh, I do that through active listening, you know, and that's something else I learned, you know, uh, avoid distractions, you know focus my attention on what, what are they really saying to me, you know, um, you know, acknowledge their emotional state. If, if they're going through something, just acknowledge that, you know, and come alongside them and uh, pay attention with my ears, my eyes, and all of my senses, and then just be involved in the conversation with them, you know, and, and that's what I, and those are the things that I picked up uh, mostly in, in uh, peer support training. Thank you. How about you, Lindsay? Um, <clears throat> I really enjoyed the recovery capital. Um, I really enjoyed that because I know that as long as I have um, my my needs, you know, um, and 
and learning how to help others learn how to stay in within their needs um, that you you just collect that capital um, and so that really that helped me to understand what I what resources I really do have and what kind of support I really really do have. Good. Jesse, how about you? Um, I really liked um, I think that I was able to bring to work was learning the difference between treating people as recipients and as their own resources that um, and also um, trauma-informed care I think helped a lot as well with being able to do my job better Good. Well, thank you guys. Is there any like final thoughts you want to share with the people who are going to be listening to this? Oh, I didn't know about nobody was listening to this. <laughs> oh. uh, I would say the best way to, to uh, uh, practice self-care is to just show up for your own life and uh, take action. That's, that's most important. If you're not caring about yourself and your life, then none of this is going to work. But if you, but if you show up and, and, and put one, one foot in front of the other, things fall in place. That's what I found to be true. Lindsay. Um, you know, I, I've, I'm learning more that my self-care is something that I have to do. And so getting up extra early in the morning, having a little time to read my word, um, just really connect with myself before I begin my day um, and, and just replenishing my needs, whatever, whatever that may be. Um, I'm working on I'm still working on some things. Um, my diet is horrible. Um, I probably should exercise more, you know, but um, I mean, I have to agree with Iman. Yeah, just put one foot in front of the other and, and you know, fall into place. Do the next right thing. And then it'll fall into place for you. How about you, Jesse? Any final thoughts? Um, I know it's really hard to take care of yourself. I have a little one, so it's it's hard to think about myself when you know she's my first priority, and I kind of probably take it a little too far and forget to take care of myself, and that's really really easy to do. So. Um, it's, it is important to take care of yourself, even for five minutes at a time. And that's about as long as I can go at a t each time. So, but even those five minutes doing something that you really like to do, um, that it's, it's worth it and it feels good. Good. Well, thank you guys for sharing your wisdom with us, and um, we'll talk to you later. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye. Hey, Scotty. Yeah. Um, can you come here a second? In a second. I gotta clean my shoes. What are you doing? I am cleaning my shoes to get the COVID off. And to get the COVID off? Yeah, I that, found a thing on ridiculous. the interwebs that says I'm transferring COVID by my shoes when I come into the house. So I changed my shoes and cleaning my shoes. Okay. This says the likelihood of COVID-19 being spread on shoes and infecting individuals is very low. Okay, if we're going to have this conversation. Okay, we're good. Nailed it. <laughs> okay. Yeah, now. it's very low, it says. Can you see that? Well, okay, but it also says as a precautionary measure, particularly in homes where infants and small children crawl or play on floors, consider leaving your shoes at the entrance. Do you see any small children? No, but they could come in. 
So, um, yeah, okay, so I'll just leave him at the door. Hmm. Thank you, Susan. Well, maybe I should go get my tennis shoes, too. Hey, I'm Ralph. Uh, I'm a recovering addict. Uh, I, I, in a couple of days, I'll have about 18 months clean and sober. Um, I've been homeless for about 15 years. Uh, then I uh, started getting my stuff together, and the COVID hit, and ended up at the shelter. Um, but I, I do still do meetings, and um, I do a lot of work on myself. I go to church. Um, that's that's pretty much what I got going on in my life right now. Uh, I've been taking care of all my medical and um, needs and stuff like that. And uh, hope hopefully soon here I'll be going back to school. My recommendation would be uh, talk to people. Talk to people, be honest, open about your situation because there is resources and people that do care and will help you out so that's that's my recommendation so self-care is a really big deal and I know that sometimes it's hard to know what exactly is self-care right but self-care can be very uh, simply de defined as taking care of yourself so that would mean meeting your basic needs so what are basic needs I don't know if you've heard about Maslow's hierarchy of needs, but um, a man named Abraham Maslow uh, came up with this model for this is, this is what humans need. And it includes physical needs, safety needs, love and belonging, esteem, and self-actualization. So sometimes uh, we can be tempted to think of something that we indulge in as self-care, right? So when I went to the grocery store and I bought a pack, a package of paws, of Cheetos paws, and I went home and I ate the whole bag. Is that really self-care or is that self-indulgence? So it's trying to understand the difference between those two. Uh, um, so something that you can look at um, when you're when you're feeling about feeling those things is if you're overwhelmed and you're, you know, what's your motivation? Are you eating or sleeping because you're anxious and you don't know how to deal with life maybe you're getting a little bit of depression those are those are things that need to be looked at in a different way that's not actually self-care but look at your your habits are you eating and sleeping enough but not too much um, that's where good self-care comes in so if you're struggling to feel safe um, especially when it comes to housing or income you can look into what options are available to you for security, right? We, we feel insecure when we don't have those things. Um, so taking care of the important things in your life, that's what self-care is. So I found an article and uh, we can uh, put the link below and you can read the whole article, but it gave a really good list of like 13 things that you can do for good self-care. So I encourage you to check that out. Um, one of them that I really like is planning your worry time. So there's always stuff going on, right? And lately we've had our share of that, that's for sure. Um, but we can, we can end up watching the news, over-focusing on that kind of stuff, worrying and planning overly much. And so planning a time when you can worry and, and when you can plan and when you can watch the news, that to me was a really great tip on how to do good self-care. So eat, sleep, drink water, all those basic things take care of your your needs to set goals and and to um, improve yourself do self-improvement all of those are good self-care 
So I encourage you to check out that article below and uh, we just hope you're doing well and um, God bless and have a good week.